Welcome back. Research has shown that while food is good and has proven medical benefits, it can be harmful when taken wrongly. To encourage Nigerians to stay fit and eat healthy, Low Carb Nigeria, an online carb shop, organized a retreat and lifestyle coach, Amina Turnbull, to help people live a sustainable, low carbonate a low carbohydrate lifestyle known as ketogenic. Participants were also introduced to Keto with Friends, a food counter mobile app designed to guide people in ketogenic dieting. Being that keto is my lifestyle, I um, always found it difficult to find anything African online to search for the amount of ca calories, carbs. There, there are, there are um, um, other um, apps that help out, but there, there's none that is African or Nigerian. We all came together and decided to check every ingredient, every food item in Nigeria from Mokbono to a goosey to melon to see the composition in fat protein and carbohydrates. So doing that, we decided to put this all together and make an app to help Nigerians. We um, discovered the low carb, high fat lifestyle. I like to call it a lifestyle because that's what it is. Uh, it's sustainable and um, it has so many other health benefits beyond weight loss. So getting people to know about this is just what our passion is right now. Because the other high higher carb lifestyle was really detrimental to everyone you know um, you see cases of high diabetes high blood pressure um, reversible diseases you know people just suffering all over the place because of the inflammations caused by carbohydrates so basically what we are doing is sensitizing them it's a sustainable lifestyle it's doable in the Nigerian context In sports news, former NPFL champions Kano Pelis this evening recorded the biggest win in match day 12 of the Nigeria Professional Football League with a 3-1 win against Ayumba International. A brace from forward Kabiru Balogun and match winner off the foot of striker Gambo Mohamed handed the Kano outfit the three points at stake, while Stephen Chukudi scored the consolation for the Aba outfit. The victorious pillars' fifth win of the season and have picked 17 points from 10 games, while Iimba are now 13th on the NPFL table with 14 points from 11 league games. Well, it looked like a deliberate. And there he goes. Oh, he buries it. Steven Chukude is the man who. Meanwhile, in other league games last season, runners-up uh, Rivers United this evening defeated defending champions Inugu Rangers by lone goal to make their third win of the season. It was a low-scoring day, match day 12, as host clubs aside edged out visiting teams of a lone, by a lone goal. Aqua United beat El Kanemi Warriors 1-0 at the nest of champions in New York. The clash between ABS FC and Katsina United also ended in the same scoreline. Sunshine Stars defeated Wiki Tourists 1-0. Lobby Stars edged out Gombe United by same score line. The game between FC Fayuba and Abia Warriors ended 2 all, while Shooting Stars held league leaders Plato United to a one all draw. In the English Premier League, Harry Kane this evening scored twice as Tottenham beat Everton 3-2 an English Premier League encounter with White Hart Lane. The 23-year-old is now the leading scorer in the Premier League with 19 goals and has found the net 14 times in 12 league and cup games in 2017. The result means Spurs are seven points off leaders Chelsea. Sergio Aguero scored his fifth goal in his last three games to help Manchester City back into third place in the Premier League and keep Sunderland rooted to the bottom of the table. In tennis, Sam Querrey has done two-time champion Rafael Nadal 6-3-7-6 in the final of the Mexican Open in Acapulco. It was his first win over the Spaniard and the 29-year-old is now the first American champion in the tournament's 24-year history. Querrey's victory also breaks Nadal's perfect record in Acapulco after the 14-time Grand Slam champion entered the final with a 14-love record and had not lost a set in any of his previous matches.
Away from sports here, the Somali government has revealed at least 110 people have died in two days from famine and diarrhea resulting from drought. Prime Minister Hassan Ali Kaira says the situation has been made worse by a lack of production on the part of pastoralists who have not been able to cultivate crop owing to conflict. He's promised the government will do its best in dealing with the situation, but is calling on all Somalis to also do whatever they can to help. In late February, the United Nations Children's Agency warned that droughts could lead up to 270,000 suffering from severe acute malnutrition this year, a situation blamed on the country's security problems. U.S. Rector of National Intelligence James Clapper denied President Donald Trump's lies that um, members of his campaign were tapped before they came into office. During an interview with NBC, he claimed there was no such wiretap activity mounted against the president-elect at the time as a candidate or against his campaign. Our correspondent in Washington, Maria Burr, takes a look at the Trump administration still in its first 100 days. Americans have varied views on the first 100 days of the Trump administration. President Trump has been met with many challenges both abroad and at home. Many world leaders refusing to support many of his executive orders and domestically Congress stalling many key cabinet confirmations. After nearly six weeks of the Trump administration, the Senate has yet to approve former Governor Sonny Perdue to lead the Department of Agriculture or Alexander Acosta, the recently nominated Secretary of Labor. The frustration expressed by Congress during congressional hearings has also been the sentiments of some American citizens. Well, I think we've really had a disastrous first 100 days. I think that uh, this is a government marked by chaos. Uh, I think it's a government marked by racism and uh, real inequality. And I think it's also indicated that Donald Trump really isn't fit to be the president. I think they've been very scary. Um, I think. Uh, rights that we have taken for granted as Americans for ever um, are suddenly not taken for granted anymore, and that's scary. It is clear that there's a lot of work to be done. From Washington, Maria Bird, Channel Television News. And the main news again, members of the UN team visiting Nigeria's northeast region have observed during a visit to Meduguri, the Bono state capital, today that the government must tackle the twin problems of insurgency and poverty in the region in order to achieve lasting peace. That is the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.